This is the Roadie Time Podcast brought to you by Rock and Roll Denim. Right. Reflex. More Reflex specific. Denim. Reflex Denim. Vintage. Vintage. I do like the vintage. The pockets are the most. That's the <laughs> Magnus feet. No, no I messed up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the word, but you get the gist. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, you get the gist. Thank you, Rock and Roll Denim. Um, it's what we ride Bronx in, or Donnie rides Bronx in. I spur bulls. Um, he cuts Willie down cuts just, down trees. I, I just get on bulls. I don't. I don't. Ride. He's a lumberjack, <laughs> and then I just I do my ranching in them. Um, I gotta have them. Does rock and roll make flannel? We need to get to, get this. Oh, guy be, some, the some the shirts are Panhandle Western wear. Oh, okay, that's where Willie I get Bunyan. My, my fun shirts. They don't do lumberjack shirts. Not yet. Maybe they should. Not yet. Not yet. You're gonna talk to. You Jameson. got more trees you want? You want down? I don't actually. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining us. We're gonna talk about a lot of things today, and uh, that's why the uh, podcast starts now. Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time, the podcast. We got the team in here. That's right. Uh, of course, your man Dale Brisby, greatest bull rider of all time. And uh, everyone else. So, um, we were just talking about who's famous from your town. And um, I think we all need to start off with Winnebago, and it's Dale Brisby. (laughs) That's where you need to give the most respect. (laughs) Right now, that's where all of you live, and that's who lives there. It's all that matters anymore. Yes. Check out... um, we need to put the, the the address to the to the warehouse on the website so people know that they're allowed to come here. Got it. We need to make the website on more it. of like a, a hub for all things Dale Brisby. How is I mean, it not? Well, yeah. it's yeah. I was gonna all say, like, your like, face is all is over it. it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not that. Okay, I guess what, like also the, w- the what address. What more do you so need from me? <laughs> we need like nine words added. The, okay. where, the, the address to the warehouse. That fully embodies. By the time this okay. comes out, you guys are going to get to search warehouse address and then weekdays. It'll be the five. first thing that pops up on Google. <laughs> Just type warehouse address. <laughs> gonna, there you go. We're going to make sure. Well, I meant within the website. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, there is this new shirt on there. Hello. We've got like nine new shirts that we're going to release periodically. We don't know how often, but right now, this is the number one new shirt. So... Text me if you want to find out a code to possibly get it for free shipping. 940-353-0890. 940-353-0890. Were you on the text list before you came here? Yeah. Slick I, Willie? I would text you to mess with you, and you never text me back. <laughs> I text a lot of people back. kind of let down. I, 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 I try to text everyone back, but sometimes I don't get to everybody. Bobby said he didn't want to text you. She's like, this kid's whack. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like really into like just killing things around here like just like like i bet you like to tell kids santa claus wasn't real <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was, that, I was i was believing that till like middle school yeah and kids ruined it for me were you mad i was really upset like i had a, a deep conversation with my mom it's like mom how deep I don't think it was deep for your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just really upset that Santa Claus wasn't real and I've been lied to my whole life. Like Polar Express, like I was planning my trip up to the Polar Express or North Pole. Boom. Lied. When Saving did money. and when did you realize Tim Allen wasn't like you were like, How could Tim Allen be an actor and Santa? Just a lot of things didn't make sense as a kid. Mm. A lot of things. <laughs> but you were so blindly optimistic that you d- you you were in junior high? And you thought Santa Claus? That might have been real. an exaggeration. Might have been like fourth or fifth grade. But it seemed like that's I was pretty still old. pretty. Uh, I feel like I was pretty, pretty old. Good run that you had there. <laughs> I was I was kind of late late to a lot of things. Like what else? All right, so Santa, puberty. What else? <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for my muscles to come in. I'm You've saying been that I'm mustache saying for like in two, two years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been growing this mustache since I don't know, too long. Yeah, that's why I don't like trying to grow it. You want you want me to have a mustache? What about this stuff on the side? I haven't shaved since I got here. Oh. Anything? You haven't shaved your face at all? No, I have. I was going to say. I bet you, like, if I went for, like, another two weeks, it'd look... It'd look like You'd what? be able to notice. You'd be able same? to notice. I was, like, I was, was going to say something. I was about to say, there wouldn't you're be a telling beard. me... There wouldn't be a beard. 
You're telling me your white trash DNA is so ingrained <laughs> that you just were born with like that yep. mullet and that mustache only. I, I don't it only really grows know what in you're right saying, here. But yeah, that's what's going on here. It yeah. grows in right here, right here, and right here. Yeah. Good for you. So that's why Mama named you Joe Dirt, not Nuttamaker. So that's for the ratty stash and pork chops. <laughs> Pretty clean shaving for it. That's why I have a mullet too. Okay. The top of my brain was showing when I was born. Mm. They put a wig on there and it stuck to you. <laughs> It's, it's been infused. It, the, the bones grew together and it got all infused. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who's famous from your town, Donnie? From my town? What famous person have you met? Um, You don't probably know who Chris Jansen is, but he's from my hometown. I've he, heard that name before. He's got a couple. Is he, isn't he like a is host? Is he a singer? Yeah, he's a singer. He oh, sings that no song singer. "Buy Me a Boat." And like, I don't know any of the stuff. Who's who's the host guy that does the American Idol? He's like off to the side. Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, yeah. He's I don't know Missouri. Chris Jansen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Other, I don't think he's from Missouri. <laughs> other than that, I, I mean, I never really met anybody too too famous. I met Chuck Liddell in the Las Vegas airport. I felt are, bad. Are we talking like BD, like before Dale? Like before I worked for Dale Brisby. Yeah, anytime. Uh -oh. Who's the most famous person you met with? Ever? Him? Or like? I mean, probably. JB. Probably <laughs> JB. <laughs> like, yeah. me honestly. and Wes Murkowski met uh, Pete Rose in the, in the. Oh. Yeah. That was uh, Warren Moon when I was a kid, quarterback. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I met like some base, like Stan Musial and stuff, like when I was like. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Ooh, I never throw up that. I mean, I don't like Cowboys, but this is still a good one. Yeah, you like the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not going to start Because you're from though. East Texas. We're not going to start yeah. on that, Weird. though. <laughs> <sighs> Who else? Hmm. Cowboy Cerrone, does that count? Mm. Yeah. My dad's met a lot of famous people like in poker rooms. He plays a lot of poker out in Vegas. <laughs> like Ben Affleck. He met Ben Affleck. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Did he play poker with him? I don't remember. He's played poker with Nelly before. Or sat what? at the same it's Nelly's at the casino in St. Louis a lot. He's he's played We need your dad on a podcast. Yeah. yeah. He'd be a pretty good one if you can get him to talk some. Cause is he's he? pretty low key. Like he don't get like all riled up about like when he sees people, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he gets in close he's able to infiltrate their their perimeter yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a spot that the guy i don't know this guy's name but jesse from uh breaking bad i think he's uh, aaron, i think he's, aaron uh, something i think he's been around him in the casino before I don't yeah. know. casinos are a good place to meet somebody yeah. everybody's equal in the casino yeah. well unless you got a lot of money then yeah. they take you to a special room and they're like and you're not so equal <laughs> yeah then you're unless not so you, equal yeah and so i guess it's pretty much just like the real world <laughs> 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 yeah and then there's people like Donnie just walking around that don't got a lot of money because they just lost their, the blackjack table. At that time, no. I had zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> zero. And you just kept giving me money, like advancing, like fronting me money. I was like, you got to stop. <laughs> like, I, like, I, can't I can't stop unless you stop. I can't. I thought you were on your way back up. I was for a little while. Very. Then my dad showed up that week. That's the yeah. problem. Like, yeah. if you're gambling to kill time that's yeah. when you're in trouble or you're gambling because somebody else is gambling because sometimes you can hit the accelerator when you're on a roll yeah and you leave big but if you just have this money and that's the problem with when we go to vegas we're there for two weeks and that's literally why we're gambling we are killing time yeah i got to go gamble with my dad when he showed that was pretty cool yeah. he kind of pushed me in the right direction of losing more money? No, no. He <laughs> spotted me about two hundred, and I got up about four, and I called her quits because I needed that just to get by the rest of the time we were out there. Are you gonna gamble, Willie? Probably not. What? what? Why not? I don't know what I'm doing. I've never gambled before. Uh, well, that, you gotta just. You this is all assuming that you're still gonna be here. Yeah, I could get fired. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. Tomorrow. Are you old enough? Yeah, I'm 22. To get fired? Well, I thought you were like, well. Yeah, but I thought you were like 20. <laughs> keep cutting down trees. <laughs> if I keep cutting down trees, I'll be gone no time. Yeah. Crepe myrtles, gone. Pecan you know? trees, nah. <laughs> you cut down a pecan tree? I took everything out. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, mm. that's the third intern that's cut down trees. It was the other one. 
Southwest. Um, I know. Greaser. He oh, wasn't yeah. an intern, yeah. but he worked for me. Yeah. yeah. I was going to plant new ones in. He told me not to worry about it, but I was going to get new ones. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so then I could cut them down later. <laughs> so I could cut them down again. <laughs> so I could cut them down again. <laughs> you can't fire me yet. I got trees to cut down in a year. It yeah. was a it was a fence line, and there was like some... They're not weeds. They're trees, but like I think it's elm trees that they'll just kind of grow anywhere, kind of like a mesquite tree. And they're fine if they get big and out and wherever. But when it's coming up right up the fence line, I was like, clear out these trees. And then about two feet over, it was some crepe myrtles in front of my house. And I guess they were too close. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was all weeds. Just <laughs> <laughs> They're like the only like manicured landscaping yeah, thing they at look, my they're house. They're like shaped. <laughs> the only, there's a random rose bush also that just, you know, it has roses on it two weeks a year. Do you just look at it and be like, nah, that, 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 that can't hey, here, hey there, yard boy. <laughs> hey there, yard boy. <laughs> These myrtle need some attention. Yeah. So, oh, Willie. Oh, jeez. I had to. I was. I was gone, and I texted him. I, him and Gabe. I was like, "Let's put the chainsaw in the feed room, <laughs> and we'll just leave it there. No more cutting. <laughs> Don't touch it. We'll just leave it there. That's no, that's uh, that's just part of it. You know, when the boss leaves, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Isn't that what they say? I did a Q and A. Oh, I just remembered who's famous for my hometown. Oh, the moments. Besides gone. me, Boudreaux. <laughs> Boudreau, yeah. Boudreau I Campbell. like Boudreau. Yeah. He's a wild son buck. That's literally he's a wild all that's son buck. Did my you know him growing up? No, I'm a way older he's, than yeah, him. I was going to say, he's I mean, I knew, we knew younger. him, but we weren't like, we just knew of each other. We weren't friends. All right. Up there, let's see some, let's see some questions. Okay. This is on Instagram. I want to know where babies come from. Hmm. Storks. Who's the best intern? Ever? Garrett Kelly Johnson, hands down. <laughs> hands Even down. Even over yourself? Wow. Yeah. Hands down. Why is that? You know, he's just, I, I can't say he's the OG because Dean was here first, but I just felt like he had the most organic reach. People just were drawn to him. Yeah. At the time, <clears throat> I would say, if you fact if you ratioed like how much time he was here, mm-hmm. he he definitely had the he gained the most followers. For yeah, and he wasn't he was here for like what five six months. Yeah, something yeah. like that. He's only there for that long. Yeah, that's what I'm he saying. Seemed like he was like, there for a while. He's just got a likable face. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the it's the uh, the sideburns. The sideburns. sideburns yeah. Yeah. We yeah, have the chops. facial hair. And he's like just yeah. he's uh, he's funny. Just he's that's, funny that's without my trying. Vote. That's You're gonna my vote. crash his wedding? No, I'm not that kind of guy. You're not a wedding crasher? No. What? If someone if you don't want someone at your wedding, you don't go. Dude, I've crashed some weddings. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I would do it to someone like I don't like. I no, don't. I did I had no idea who the per- people were. <laughs> oh really? What, really? Like actual <laughs> wedding. Zero crashers. idea. I'm telling you one thousand percent. It was at the country club in college station. Or it was in Bryan. <laughs> what did you dress nice? Yeah, what did you do? Did you go with Yeah, someone? I had to. Because yeah. it was like they were all dressed nice. Me, Leroy, and <laughs> 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 Golly, oh who God. else was it? We freaking ate dinner. <laughs> we danced. It was a, identical did, to the did movie. Did people ask did how you, you act, knew? Yeah, did you did, act like you knew? Yeah. Yep. So yep. who did you know? The bride? We'd made up a name. Oh. I'm not joking. You know the, do you know, you're, you, I'm not sure if you remember, but my profile picture one time, I was wearing a suit and aviators and I had my deal ripped open yeah. and the shirt set. That was the night. Okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I think Peyton was there. That's who. It here. was me and Leroy and Payton. Did y'all just were like, whatever on Friday night? Hey man, S- or did Saturday, you plan this yeah. out? Yeah. Like, was nope. it? Nope. Did you like? Did you like? Do I mean, there recon? are weddings happening. Like, in not much. No. Yeah. All the time. We went to the. It was a church. We went to the church. Oh, you went to. We the went to the ceremony. ceremony. The we went to the rec- both reception. Like we went to the full on deal. I'm impressed. <laughs> it was a like it was like a. a they had assigned seats, so like we had to find seats where people were missing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, dude, it was that this fancy. was it was a formal yeah. wedding. Like this son of a gun was like, it was the most legit. I've crashed weddings of like my roommate in college, like sister, you know, and yeah. I go there and I know three fourths of the you know mm-hmm. people there. But this one, I didn't know a soul going into that building. Was it fun? Yeah, it was all right. 
Oh. It was all right. I mean, I... 10 for 10 dude again? It was free dinner, you know? <laughs> I pulled a creed and, like, I didn't, like, switch the <laughs> switch the actual note, but, like, I picked up a, a present and then, like, circled around and then, like... Put it back. People saw me put <laughs> yeah. it back, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like That's a, awesome. That was a, it was a real... I, uh, Donnie, let's do it. Okay. It was it was a real deal. <laughs> okay. Like, I'd rather not know the people, honestly. Like I'd rather yeah. not know them. At towards the end, like when we were dancing and hanging out, I think at the I mean, it was like ceremony. We went to the ceremony. We went to the uh we went to dinner, the reception, and then like we were there. I didn't give a toast. You know, but like we were there, we raised our glasses to the toast yeah. and then we danced for a little bit. So like we were there for, we were around these people for two and a half hours. And then, uh, towards the, uh, middle of the dance, like I could tell, you know, people were talking and so like, starting at once. yeah, we, yeah, we split up and then we found our exits and got out of there. Do you remember their names? No, That's no, so funny. that is crazy yeah that's funny there was and then there was another one there was a second we we did two that summer and the other one like i didn't know them that well but i knew them a little more you know like i could say hi to people there Mm -hmm. were some people there i could say hi to but i didn't know like the people getting married but like there was somebody i could like i was there plus i could act like i was there plus one it was it was a little awkward I was gonna say that's ballsy. It like, it was, it was not. I mean, you gotta like be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, like it, it's it's kind of like the movie, but like if you don't if you say the wrong thing, that's when it gets awkward. Oh yeah, because we sat down at a table with ten people. It's me and Leroy, <laughs> and they're like, and they all know each other. Yeah. So they're like, who are you two? Yeah. So we had to have that conversation. What was your backstory? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it was in a college town. So that yeah. part was, you know, we were all, we went to college with. They didn't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> She's a hairstylist. Yeah. She went to up there. What, what we had to do was we had to kind of fill out that table and yeah. we kind of asked around to see who that table was with. To, to say we were with the other people's family. Oh, okay, yeah. That's you know what good I mean? thinking. Yeah. So, like, we made sure we didn't sit with the Joneses, and then we say, yeah, we're cousins of the Joneses. Right. You know, you know, like, we we had to... But ask Leroy about it. Uh-huh. Ask him, like, when I'm not around. Uh-huh. He'll tell you the same thing. We, we, both, we both wore aviators, and we were oh, like... Y- the whole yeah. time? You didn't take the sunglasses off. I'm trying to remember. I think I took the sunglasses off, because then that would have really <laughs> raised <laughs> some Q and A's. Aren't you Dale Brisby? Yeah. No, we took the shades off in the church. Yeah. Respectfully. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And then the, <laughs> yeah. So, but man, yeah, that was touch and go. Like it was. I personally like get a little bit. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we didn't know who they were. So, like, if we had gotten busted, it's like okay. Yeah. Uh, 343 oh, well. people yeah. that yeah. had no idea who I was. I, now they uh, kn- there's that many people that don't know. I thought there was three. At that time, okay, that was a decade uh, ago. Yeah, and so at that time, but yeah, yeah. Have you seen those memes where it's like for two hundred dollars I'll show up to your ex's wedding, like with a fake baby, like pregnant, you know, and like try to like end the wedding, and wow. then leave, <laughs> or like show up to a funeral, like. What, dressed in all black, like, and just mysteriously hang out in the back and then, like, say stuff to your ear and then walk away. No, but that sounds awesome. Yeah. I, I seen one where a guy was like, I'm going to pay some Italian guys to come to my funeral and be like, we're going to miss your boss. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then walk out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Those that are would, freaking funny. That would be hilarious if I did something like that. Yeah. You know, with all the different stories that go around about Dale Brisby. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, he was a good one. Or just like in the middle of the sermon, just go up and like maybe five of them, they take a knee and then they each take a shot of whiskey or yeah. something and then yeah. leave. Leave a rose on your casket and then walk away. <clears throat> Does anything ever happen to you at a wedding, Willie? I haven't gone to very many weddings. Yeah. Yeah, why not? his friends probably aren't really old enough. Yeah, my friends really aren't 
getting married right now. What are your go-to pair of boots? I'm a fan of Finolio. Finolios are good. I love Finolios. I, I don't have any, but uh, I've got RC boots. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, didn't not. sound like you had yeah, any I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know anyone that got married. <laughs> it's a dead end. What are some books you would recommend business, personal enjoyment? Uh, the Traveler's Gift. Andy Andrews. That's a pretty dang good one. Andy Andrews has a bunch. <laughs> a fight breaks out between Donnie Daytona, Lane Frost, and Hacksaw Jim Dugan. Who wins? Who's Hacksaw Jim Dugan? I think he's a wrestler. Probably Lane. No offense, Donnie. Are I you mean, a Dapper Dan man or Fop? <laughs> I'm a Dapper Dan I'm man. A Dapper Dan man. I don't want Fop. I don't want no. What are fop. some books you recommend? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> Dale never texts me back. That one's from Willie. <laughs> I sent him that. I feel your pain. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Will y'all visit College Station anytime soon, Super Puncher? I need to. My bank, my CPA, my lawyer, they're all in College Station. Is I think Carter I've been getting there. married in? Mineral Wells. Oh, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Yeah, which is handy that yeah. it's only 40 minutes away. Yeah. I want to hear about the... Ranch experience. Um, yeah, so I went out. It was Spring Works last week. I was gone, and that's when Willie chopped down all the trees. Caitlin kind of runs the office. Donnie went home, came back early because he was bored. Yeah. And um, they found out it was my birthday, and I got chapped. So <laughs> <laughs> hit my head really hard. Yeah, okay, talk about that part because I think I missed it. You just ran and fell and hit your head or what? It's a two and a half minute video. The one I put on Instagram is the second half of it. Oh, okay. The first half of it, they, um, so like all day, obviously I knew it was my birthday, but I didn't <laughs> think anybody else did. And so I was like trying not to talk about it, trying not to check my phone in front of anybody because I had 35 messages, like text messages. And so with, that I didn't respond to because I was scared somebody would walk up over my shoulder and see it. <laughs> um so anyways lunch and I, we got done brandon it was like noon and i thought they were going to get me then because people were grabbing their leggings weird <laughs> and so everybody suspicious. was <laughs> cleaning up the 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 toolbox and the meds and and the brandon irons and took them back so i grabbed the brandon irons you know, so I had so six Brandon irons. Use them as weapons? So I could use them as weapons. <laughs> like, I could just hit people. And I just turned. And I, I was ready. Because last year, when I was there on my birthday, that's when they got me. Right when we got done. So I was ready this time. But nobody ever came after me. And so then we sprayed the cows, held them up, and then started trotting back. So then lunch, I was like, <laughs> and uh, nobody got me. So then we, we did something after lunch. We had to move some dry cows or something. But anyways, av avoided them then and then uh, went and bathed in the horse trough by myself. I was like watching my sixes on top of a hill. So like, It's like a war movie. <laughs> and then I came back and I was on the phone and I was sitting in my truck let my, my phone charge and nobody was around. Austin Garvin was roping a dummy and Dusty Burson was riding up on a colt. So I was, and I had been in my truck for about 40 minutes just on the phone with random people. And so I was like, I don't, I guess it's not, I guess, I guess I'm going to change and then just hang out in my teepee. So I go to my teepee, I talk to Duddy for a second and then the zipper was down. So I was like, oh, somebody zipped it shut for me. The wind must have been flapping my teepee door. And I opened it, and there was five guys in my teepee. <laughs> they had been in there for an hour, a full hour, <laughs> in this hot teepee waiting on me. <laughs> That's Jeez. commitment. Yeah, it is. Yes, <laughs> commitment. Yeah, so True's brother has a uh, – Zach, the oldest of the three, has a, um, a wedding anniversary on that day. And so throughout the day, he found out. Mm. You know, he remembered um, because of that. <clears throat> anyway, they take off. I turn – and I'm I'm aiming for I'm gonna run in front of this roping dummy, but then Austin, who had been roping the dummy, had snuck around, and he grabbed my arm and it twisted me, and so I hit the roping dummy at full that. speed, yeah. mm. flipped over backwards. First thing that hit the ground was my head, then my shoulder followed, and my hip still sore. Uh, how's your shoulder? Uh, 
Well, it was the uh, it wasn't the collar, but okay. broken collar. Okay. So, anyways, they hear me groaning and they give me a break because they thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> they gave me a break and I took it because they thought my collarbone had broke for the fourth time. And <laughs> then I get up and they're like, "Man, we thought you were hurt." And I'm in the video. I'm standing there. And that's when I say, I can't believe y'all gave up. And I knew they were going to chase me the moment I finished the sentence. So that's when I, I, can't, I said, I can't believe y'all gave up. And then I took off. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when they got me. I wanted to give them the... But I had planned on, like, throwing bows. If you don't fight back, then you get shap and, like, even harder. Like, they, you got to fight back a little. And if you don't help them shap, then you get a shap. Because Tyler, Terry, was there, and he came up late. So he didn't get to help, so he got a shapin. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Like, you feel like just off doing whatever. He, yeah, he was under the fly. Just anyway. So like I, uh, <laughs> you get a chapin. I had planned on like throwing bows, like really like making it a a, a memorable experience. Yeah, probably would have not worked out. It definitely would have worked out for me. But then when I was flanking one calf, like I felt my my shoulder just like shoot pain. And I was like, oh, my gosh. you know. And I thought, I'm going to break my collarbone for the fourth time. <laughs> so I decided to just evade them as much as possible, maybe bite a few people, and then bite a take few. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. So that's why in the video you can see me give up. You should have left your pony somewhere handy. That yeah. would have been kind of obvious, though. At some point. Oh, yeah. So that's what I, I did at the end of the day. We We – gathered horses and like everybody was like everybody was unsaddled and i was like still horseback Mm -hmm. but apparently they didn't even know then oh yeah so like i was like just riding around on the outskirts (laughs) so that was my i I wish they would have just known and gotten me at 8 a.m so i could have not worried all day yeah Yeah. really but yeah i was it was it was a constant day day of fear (laughs) yeah but if you want to hear more about that experience um the ran- the whole ranching deal on my TikTok. I have a play by play of what it goes on. That was neat. On the wagon. That was a cool little deal. Thank you. I, th- I thought of that. Uh, there's a beehive lady. She's like the beekeeper, and she's on TikTok. And I don't really care about. I hate bees. Hate wasps. Are you talking about the girl that goes in and like? Yeah, yeah. Moves yeah she out don't use a. She don't use a, a suit. Nothing. No. She yeah. just goes for it. Um. Yeah. And I, I got caught watching one of hers, and it was I was like, man, as they're, much as I hate wasps and bees, you just made me watch this whole play oh, yeah. by play. They're so I was like, I'm gonna to do get that. You, like, and her voice is very calm yeah, and yeah. soothing. And so I was just like, that's my problem with TikTok. I don't know how to format myself like to do those videos. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, yeah. you gotta almost like it's a special format that goes into like those videos. Like that was a good TikTok format. I felt like. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, some, watch this later. Not all my TikToks are like that. Sometimes you can't plant. Sometimes you never know. Yeah. Um, but there's different kinds. People do all kinds did of different you, things. Did you know you were going to voice over like, yeah. all that stuff when yeah. you started? Yeah. Yeah. So I started. That was all one day. So, mm-hmm. And it's two minutes of footage. It's like, oh, my gosh, how does he even get done ranching, get any ranching done? But if you think about it, like, all right, we're out there for 11 hours. Yeah. And those are each like eight second clips. Yeah. And it takes me about half that time to get my phone out, hit record, put it back in my pocket. So yeah, you're pretty quick on the draw. 12 or deal. 13 seconds at a time, you know. It's like he does it for a living. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not like a 64 year old who oh. just picked up a, a, <laughs> an iPhone. Like, I can get to my camera pretty damn quick. I open my. <laughs> and I know the moments in ranching. Like, like, I get, for instance, I get dropped off. I can see my next man three quarters of a mile. There's no cows in front of me. We're hollering it off, so I got to wait anyway. 12 seconds of footage is not going to hurt anything. How do you holler it off in 25 mile an hour winds or however? Yeah, really. Uh, yeah, in the 25 mile an hour winds, you couldn't holler it off. You just got to make sure you see your next man, and when he goes, yeah. you go. Um, but there was one day, a couple days before that, it was so foggy. Like, we couldn't see from here to that wall, yeah. the next wall the, in my office. Oh, yeah. So and Hagen, um, Lamb, he's he's on the Crutch Ranch right north of Dixon Creek, and so he uh, he was neighboring. But he said like eight years ago, one year they were in that same pasture we were in, and it was so foggy that 
if you turned your horse around, you didn't know which way you were going. Ooh. And so they, they eventually just had to like, just give up and go to the pens. Cause like cows would be running and it was, yeah, you, pr- you couldn't see them. Couldn't see the cows and it was you. so thick. You couldn't hear anybody. Yeah. It was even the sound was, was flat Cut off. Yeah. It did. It, it almost got that thick at one point for like a minute or two. And then it started getting wide. You know, the fog got widened out, but. The hail was crazy. Gosh, oh, yeah. man, that stuff was. We were all under the fly when that happened. It was. It rained like four inches in an hour. Four and a half. Four and a half at headquarters in an hour. That, that sounded away. loud. Yeah. Yeah, it was really loud. We got in that mineral barn, and I slept in there one night. And then the next night, we killed a snake in there. So I got out of that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of snake? I don't remember. I wasn't in there. I just saw its head. He's but like, that's enough. I, I, I'm not about just killing any snake unless it's like within feet of where I sleep. <laughs> then I'm I'm okay with them killing any snake. But <clears throat> it was a good time. I got to learn from Hagen. I was on his side this year. So I'm sad we have to miss Pippins. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah. Uh, rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Um, I don't know where it is now. How long you been farming? <laughs> Z- zero <laughs> years. You gonna rope them UFOs for us? What's he talking about? Is All there the, something? Oh, in the news, apparently there's like the Pentagon's like released. This Evidence has been going on. This has been going yeah. on for a long time. Aliens are real. <laughs> like the the Air Force apparently sees unidentified flying objects off the East Coast like daily, like daily apparently but this they've been talking about this for a long time so i don't really know what the so I thought it, are you going to rope them <laughs> <laughs> now that you get, know <laughs> they get close enough I've, it was funny listening they gotta get to pretty close <laughs> <laughs> was, i've been i've listened to uh joe rogan's and theo vaughn's podcast but elon musk goes on joe's podcast yeah. and he's talking yeah. about um people going to mars mm-hmm. you know living on mars mm-hmm. and Joe was bringing up aliens. Yeah. And he was like, I mean, do you plan for it? And he's like, no, not really. <laughs> like, well, what are you going to do? And he's like, well, um, just probably have to say this, this is new information. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we'll deal with it. Yeah. And I was like, sounds fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. you imagine like having to have a strategy session? Like you've got a project going so big. <laughs> That you've got to have a strategy session around what if aliens show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then ultimately you just, well, Shrug your I guess we'll just deal with it <laughs> yeah. if, when it comes. <laughs> Hopefully they're friendly. He made a good point. He was like, you know, he said that, uh, well, an interesting point, you know. But he said that one of the reasons why he's not, and Joe Rogan actually brought that thing up. That sounds familiar. That yeah. story about the, the Air Force, whatever. Yeah in this conversation but but elon was talking about like he's like even there's just no evidence on earth he said i would be more inclined to think about it if there were more evidence on earth like for instance if there were like a titanium cube or something something that that a caveman or a human cannot make like undeniable evidence yeah Yeah. like an undeniable like maybe if like an archaeologist was like digging and they found like a titanium whatever you know and he's like some something like that, you know, mm, to yeah. make it. And that's that's that's, that's that's interesting. Yeah, it is. It is very intriguing to me. To my mom, like I remember when I was like maybe seven, like I I, I began to get very intrigued with like <laughs> outer space, just as if. Oh, and any, you love ET. Any oh, freaking love ET. That's <laughs> scary. Yeah. Love ET. Love it. So. Anyways, I was like starting to get intrigued with it and like just the thought of like this we're in this galaxy and like Mars and Pluto being the furthest like that's only the beginning of like what's infinity sp- you know what I mean like and so like I learned these planets and then at some point I remember my mind being blown like no 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 this is one galaxy and there's like yeah. and so like I remember asking my mom about like man what are we doing we got to get out there and explore and she was like 
you don't know enough about Earth yet. <laughs> <laughs> just focus on our planet. That's and so just funny. killed my dreams of Young learning. Young Frisbee could have been an astronaut. Yeah. That's what she, she for real told me. That. It's like the cowboy. only time like, in my life that my mom has ever like squashed something. <laughs> and I think she was just having a bad day, you know, and she just didn't want to hear about... But you know, I like was playing with rockets and stuff. She says you just drop them and just but <laughs> I was, walk away. <laughs> that's how I felt. I just walked away from it. Like mentally... <laughs> I remember for years after that, I used that. I was like, oh, we don't know. I told someone that. Like, we don't know enough about our own planet. Don't she's, talk to me about outer space. She's right. I took it. Like, I don't know if my mom realizes, like, how much she might have, like, just just doused a fire that was in me with that. She was just like, you don't even know how to ride a horse yet. Focus on that first, Dale. Like, maybe when you're 50, you know, like, conquer Earth first. I don't – but – Seriously, I was like, and I was, it was like a borderline <laughs> philosophical moment, which it was deep for a seven year old. Cause I was literally thinking, like, what are we doing down here fighting and arguing? And I was probably <laughs> talking about, like, you know, your buddies on the playground fighting and arguing, not right. like yeah. in a political, political realm. Standpoint. Yeah. But I was like, what are we doing down here? Just all these daily, like, we need to, there's Reach all that for outer the space. <laughs> Shooting we need star to goes by figure out our, yeah. You need to figure out your own planet first, Dale. And I, maybe she was just having a bad day. I don't know. She was never like, like with Leroy and music, like. I want to be an astronaut. Very the encouraging. Hell you know, <laughs> the hell you will. <laughs> to kill this boy's dreams. <laughs> Leroy with guitars. Like I remember we'd drive all the way to frickin' Childress so he could get a guitar lesson. <laughs> Well, that I doesn't just, require outer space experience, so. She put me in gymnastics. <laughs> I was, Dude, Leroy went to gu- guitar and I was in gymnastics. Closest thing you can get to astronaut camp. I didn't want to go anymore because <laughs> the lady that taught it. Yeah, exactly. Trampoline. That was the closest I could get to <laughs> astronaut, astronaut camp. camp. <laughs> was, was gymnastics. You want a flag or get on trampoline? I was very <laughs> disinterested after, somehow we're all like doing the, the Indian pose or like whatever and like we're stretching and like, the the gym teacher said something about um, boogers came up, whatever. Somebody, like, picked their nose or something. It was, like, a bunch of, like, eight-year-olds in there, you know, <laughs> so I'm sure all of us were. <laughs> and she said to wipe it on your sock. And I was disgusted. <laughs> she was like, yeah, just put it on your sock. It'll come off in the washing machine. And I just, anyways, and when I think back to that year, I just think of this fit, attractive, blonde gymnast teacher with boogers on her socks <laughs> and that was when i stopped going to gymnastics <laughs> so i'd stay with dad when Leroy went to get his guitar lessons we're unveiling a lot about your childhood <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> so then the next joe rogan podcast had marcus luttrell on it have you heard that one that guy's huh. crazy have you heard that that's podcast? a cool guy that's a cool well that's a cool podcast it's crazy because you could tell like the whole time he's just Marcus Luttrell. I want to say like 40% of the podcast is him going like, and it's a neat thing. Like I'm not down in it, but he's like, dang, I hadn't thought about this in a while. And he's like, and he like pauses for like eight seconds. He's like, yeah. And then Muhammad, the guy that saved him, his name yeah. is Muhammad, come over this hill. And he talks about all these different stories that went on. He like t- talks about stuff that wasn't in the movie. He hasn't seen the movie. But anyways, I'll listen to that. I respect yeah, still. that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Which makes sense. Ross said that he doesn't like to watch them. And he cannot listen to some of that music. What but, music? Well, like, not that not that any of us would just listen to that music. Oh, but when he music. hears that yeah, music. Yeah, 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 the prayer music. Right. I'm sure that. Because there's, like, a, there was a couple of, there was a rap song that came on that, like, had it in the yeah, background. Yeah. And he was like, can't do that, man. And I was like, okay. Not that I want, I mean, it just came on. Just some weird PTSD yeah. stuff, yeah. But anyway, he was, uh, he had a really, that was a cool story. It was It was neat to, that. but that Muhammad guy, that the one that saved him, that was one thing he said that was different, that wasn't portrayed in the movie like it happened in real life. He, It showed him in the movie as being there for like one day yeah. or one night, mm-hmm. but he said he was there for like eight days. Oh, yeah. And this, this village, like they had to like keep moving him. They kept fighting mm-hmm. for like a week. He was just like, they were Getting fighting around Taliban. And uh, they eventually they had to hide him under a rock, you know? But um, I thought that was even before he got found, but 
Well, he did hide under a rock. Yeah. But then even after, they like stuffed him in a hole Dang. to hide him. Dang. And because uh, he couldn't walk. But um, he brought the guy over here. Oh, yeah. The guy lives here now in 19. That's crazy. I didn't know that. It's not 19 kids. I think it's like maybe 15 or 16 and some grandkids or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, he lives in the U.S. He now. He like take care of them. Yeah, they like they talk hang out, yeah. all the time. That's pretty cool. I gotta watch that podcast. They try to talk. The guy can't speak English, but his kids speak English. Mm-hmm. He said he gets mad at him all the time. He, he'll yell at him. He'll yell at Marcus? Yeah. Why? Just like little things that make him mad. Like, why are you doing this kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. But the, he said they have like very short term memory. So like then like 30 seconds later, he'll just be over it. Yeah. Okay, let's go eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That to me was pretty in- intriguing. Like that would be fun to be able to do. You know, somebody mentioned that's building. interesting. That's a crazy like. And then yeah, he was and Joe was like his mind was blown. He was like, he's over here. He's like, yeah, man. If, when I'm your friend, he's like, I'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah. if you're my friend. Yeah, I was that's like, the kind Dang. of guy you want taking care of you too. Yeah, no kidding. No, yeah, even without knowing that, we thought we we figured he was the kind of guy we wanted taking care of us. But he talks about it like how he it was really a loss. Like he took an L. You know, they got their asses whooped is mm-hmm. what he says. And everybody's always telling him good job. But And so he had to rationalize the fact that like his purpose was to tell the story. And that was why he was a survivor. So but, I'm sure it's movie. hard for him not to see it like that. You yeah. Know, you know, mm-hmm. like it was I think it had been I don't know how many years it had been since it happened when he was doing this podcast. But it was so just seeing him think about like oh man i hadn't thought about this in a while and so like you can see him replaying it and he hasn't replayed it that to me was super interesting like oh my gosh like i wonder what the real movie in your brain looks yeah, like yeah man okay yeah because well, i saw that all in real life nothing like like you can't even like begin to fathom right. it like because it's like sometimes like movies show you what like it's yeah. like quote unquote, but like to be there and to like hear bullets snapping or in, I don't know. Like yeah, you can't even put yourself into the mental part of it. The most dramatic think. thing yeah. that probably ever happened to a human is that. Stuff. Yeah, like throwing yourself off the side of a mountain, like continuously while <laughs> yeah. people are shooting he, at you. He that's what that's Losing what he brought friends. up. He brought that up a couple times. Yeah, because I guess he was there when they were filming it, mm-hmm. and he was talking about the stunt doubles who yeah. just like got hurt bad, like mm-hmm. doing it, and he was telling Joe, he was like. Yeah, and and the movies try to make that look sexy. And Joe was like, well, it didn't look very sexy in this movie. (laughs) And he was like, but really, like, it was brutal. So, like, it made me think, like, it was even worse than what it... Yeah. Hollywood did their best to communicate, you know, and it was even worse than that. Like, I can't imagine, like, that's that's your next play. We're going to jump down. We're just going to fall down this cliff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can you imagine that. <laughs> being in that spot? Like, it's mm. just like this is our only choice. If we don't fall down this, however many feet cliff, then we we could either die here or we just fall down this cliff. Yeah, and maybe die down there. He said there was one point whenever it was like, I mean, I'll let you, I, you some you might listen to it. I don't know, but there was one point he was like, "What is there?" Maybe he was asking him what was what in the movie. He was like, "There was one point where I can't remember which of his buddies." was sitting next to him oh yeah and and uh then the, the, did you watch the podcast i've seen i've seen the part you're talking about right now and then one of them is like i just got shot again <laughs> and they were like you know he was like shut up we've all been shot and then he looks over he's i want to say axe and he was like there's just all of them blood everywhere yeah, and he's yeah. like bro you got stuff all in your teeth <laughs> and he's like right here <laughs> he's like pointing at his teeth like it was a joke, you know, that like they've got blood and broken yeah. bones and Dang. they've been shot. I can't imagine like joking. <laughs> he's got, and then he's Finding like, humor. Yeah. He's like, you got some celery right Dang, here. bro. Parsley in your in your teeth. Oh, man. But <clears throat> it was interesting. I think that's where like the training would come in where it's just like, because he, he was talking about like <clears throat> they, the moment one of the seals dies, then they've done their job. You know, and their job is done. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, he finished his job. I'm the one still working on it. I, it's, I think th- it was something like roughly that. is kind of what I got yeah. out of it. That's yeah. how I interpreted what he was saying. And so it's almost like, but that to me, it's still. And then he was like, uh, towards the end of it, he was talking about how he was like, um, he was surprised. And he was talking to Joe and he said, 
man, I, I couldn't believe it. Y'all came and got me. And he said, I signed up to be an expendable asset. So, like, I signed up to die. And in his words, he said, that was the sexiest thing I'd ever heard of. But you guys came and got me anyway. And he was like, y'all, meaning like the USA. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really interesting way to to word it. Mm-hmm. But it just revealed, like, how he thought about it. And, uh, yeah, so anyways. And then he said, that's when I really got nervous when all y'all showed up and y'all are trying to get me out. And he was like, and, and that was a night that happened at night. Not yeah. A, not during the day. Got shot down. In like yeah. A with bunch the rest of of 19. Yeah. 19 seals died. Mm-hmm. Second largest amount of seals. The other one was like 31. Cause another one recently like, happened right after. This was like, like Osama Osama seven, Laden. I feel like. Yeah, this was, but when the they got Osama bin Laden, I thought like a few weeks after that, another seal helicopter crash. Yeah. I don't know. Now like a bunch of the seal team six guys in it or something. I thought uh, I saw something like terrifying. That. I don't know how they. My friend went over there, and there is no way I would ever want to go over there. I if I, I can't remember who I was talking to, but like I, I wanted to be, cowboy, rodeo cowboy. So like my old man, he was like he he worked on the pitchfork, and then he rode Bronx. He did all those things, and so like, that was my passion. You know, I've actually never been on the pitchfork. Well, outside of when I was like a baby, but like I've never been on it since. It'd be neat to work there one day, but um, just day work. Anyway, like I was like as a kid, kid, I wanted to work on the pitchfork. I didn't even know what it looked like, you know. But I wanted to, like, I just I would yeah. draw it on my paper, you know. And uh, but then I realized, you know, like those guys, you can't be a full timer and rodeo. And so as I got older, I knew I was gonna. Ro- I had to rodeo, and so I knew I wouldn't work on the pitchfork you know on a a full-time gig so that that kind of left me because so anyway then it was like I got a rodeo but if I had like grown up like in any sort of like the other one was I wanted to go to the military and I was even running I wanted to go to the marines like I was running three miles a day every day actually four because my it's 4.2 miles to my school and me and Chris Mills would run to school and so, like, uh, we were trying to, because I think whenever you, you got to run, like, to test, you got to run three miles, and mm-hmm. you got to be able to run it within a certain time frame, which it's pretty open, you know, you don't, but we were, tr- like, I was getting ready, and ultimately, I couldn't do it, because I didn't want to take four months away from being a cowboy, and then Chris failed the hearing test, <laughs> so <laughs> he didn't get to go, <laughs> but I think if, if cowboy were not something in my realm of what I was going to do, then I would have definitely gone to the Marines, which would have put me, looking back, I would have either gone to Iraq or Afghanistan, which might mean I wouldn't be here. Well, going to the Marines, I wouldn't have been here because I wouldn't have been, ended up, So it would have changed my rodeo path. Cowboy, mm-hmm. astronaut, and then military. And Marine. Astronaut first. Oh, astronaut, <laughs> then cowboy. I wanted to be an astronaut cowboy. <laughs> Marine. Then just cowboy. <laughs> then then Marine. Marine. Got it. But anyhow, I say all that like I'm very, I don't know the right word, intrigued, enthralled. Like there's definitely a lot of respect, Mm -hmm. but like very, I don't want to say passionate about it just because I feel like that's, you got to kind of be in it to know how, what level of passion to have. But, and then as a rodeo cowboy, you become pretty appreciative of military because I think as a civilian, that's like the most free thing a guy can do. One of the most free things a person can do. It's like pack up your bags in a car, truck, or van and go to rodeos. And in theory, win a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? In theory. Like get, in theory, get Have paid hopes. to do it, yeah. you know? <clears throat> well, if you break even, it's a free vacation. Heard that, old son. So anyhow, I get... <clears throat> that's why I can sit and listen to a Marcus Luttrell podcast. Oh, absolutely. Or, you yeah. know, love those movies. 13 Hours mess with me. I didn't like that one as much. So the one with John Krasinski? Yes. Yeah. I, Did y'all like American Sniper? How, what do you mean? I like, one, yeah, that I liked American Sniper. Yeah. Maybe but, I need to go back and rewatch it. I just didn't think the story was told as well as like some like 13 hours yeah like, like I, as, I agree as but it was a true story yeah right. so are as American Sniper and right. like and Survivor. oh you just feel like they could have told the story better maybe yeah maybe I just need to go back and rewatch it 
I don't know. I was, it was just, to me, what was intriguing was like, and, and John Krasinski, whatever his name is in the movie, he touches on it in the movie, but like the fight breaks out and it's like, you just respond. Yeah. Which is I, the way I would assume like if there were weaponry near and something happened, we would respond. But like then there's a break and they know they're coming again mm-hmm. and they've got like a couple of hours where they have to wait on essentially them to get the back. Yeah. That's when it would be very interesting to me when you have like two hours and you know at X time o'clock people are going to start shooting at yeah. you. Yeah. You know what you need to watch? There's there's a documentary. There's two of them, and they're they're coinciding. They're about the same group of people. It's Corngall and Restrepo, and it's about um, this Ranger Battalion over in the Corngall Valley in Afghanistan. The documentaries, yeah, and it's freaking good. It's like, not like a movie though. No, it's documentaries, Dang. and it's like it's on Netflix. A lot of home. It used to be. I don't think it is anymore, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. It's a lot of like home videos of them up in, in this outpost in this valley. And is that the one they made a movie about? I don't think there's no, a movie. The, I, know I know what you're, you're talking, talking about. about that's Ope Outpost with Clint Eastwood in it. Yeah, or not Clint Eastwood's son. His yeah. son. Yeah. yeah, that's a good movie, and it's a, like the <clears throat> same kind of concept. But this is like, no, this is different. This, yeah, this is different. Did y'all ever see Twelve Strong? Is that with uh, like they're all horse horseback and uh, yeah, I did. Or yeah, is that any good? I don't think it's I know. One. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, I think it was that a was good a story. story. It's just like so much story that, and they fit it into an hour and a half, two hour movie. That like, I think that happens a lot. They have a really good story, and they just kind of compact it down yeah. to a two hour deal. Which I miss some holes. Yeah, some you know, you got. Holes. I guess you got to do. Yeah. Unless you make it a series. Of course, they Problem got solved. you know, like for instance, Titanic. You know, trying to tell a t- true story, <laughs> mix in like a little bit of like actual drama, and it's like. That one probably could have been told in an hour and a half. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, I think that yeah. they drug that one out a little <laughs> so bit. So this boat sank. What's the other one that with Ben Affleck? Pearl, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Oh, That's I, a good movie. I don't That's like a that. long, isn't it? I don't like yeah. that movie. You don't uh, like that movie? Why? I, I that th- was the I, first DVD we ever had. I, I wasn't crazy about the ending, like how he ended up with his old that other guy's old lady. I thought that was That was up. crazy, too, yeah. yeah. But it was they his old lady back first. and forth, yeah. Oh, see, that just the passing. Just ain't right. Just ain't right. Just ain't right. There's plenty of fish in the sea. But she got knocked up, so she couldn't leave. What's his name? Name when he got Josh Hartnett. Yeah, when he got back. Yeah. Black Hawk Down. That's another good movie. Mm-hmm. That, that is Black a good Hawk movie. Saving Private Ryan, though, is one, like, one of my. That yeah, that's a good one. Black Hawk Down just has I don't know. That was the one that I watched. When I felt I was like homesick. Saving Private Ryan was pretty messed up at the end, where Tom Hanks tells him to earn this. Yeah, I, I was like, was I was like, up. dang, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like you're on your way uh, out. You're about to go like. This guy's like, <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Like, how do you go live? You know. I tried to use that in like a sermon once where I was talking about like how you can't earn it, you know? Yeah. It's got to be a gift, a, a grace. But. But I didn't think he was like deserving. Like he stayed, like he had his out, like, you know, like his three brothers are dead and he was like, I'm staying here. Yeah. Like, I think it was I, four. Yeah. Isn't it five yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like You're that. You're probably right. Was but that a true story? No. Nah. Yeah, of course not. I don't yeah. think so. Why don't, yeah. Of course it wasn't. I yeah. think it might have been taken from like uh, based on a true story, but not in World War Two. I think it was a Civil War story. Like it had happened. Oh. Like, well, the Sullivan brothers, what it's based on, were all, all these like five brothers that were in the Navy in the beginning of World War Two, and they're on the same ship, and they all died when it got blew up or blown up. Dude, that's like. <laughs> but that's like that's how the plot was originated because okay. that's why they had to go save them because like well, we can't have like this happen again with the Sullivan brothers. It's like the plot of it. So like, there's parts of it that's true. They just made like their own thing. I bet they split people up now. <coughs> oh, I bet. Because that is terrible. I think it's a law now, isn't it? Or yeah. Really? Well, I think. Well, back then, you know, units trained together. Like, yeah. You signed up and you went off. But I think like starting World War Two isn't that like when they started like trying to split people up? No. During World. Well, maybe after something like that, but like during World War Two, you started training with this unit and you went to war. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I'm saying with the brothers. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know family about stuff. that, but like you know, you sign up with some guys you grew from your up hometown. With yeah, you, you they did it all by regional stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> they what's, stopped doing that around Vietnam. What's the purpose of a, co- a breast collar? 
That keep is, your saddle from coming off. Keep your saddle from coming back when you tie it off to them biggins. Tie it hard and fast. I used to use a pulling collar, and then Buckethead liked to always duck down, and he uh, choked himself out twice. Fell on me. Fell over. Yeah. <laughs> Broke a stirrup, and then uh, so I, I switched to a, a tripping collar. Now when they put at the tripping collar the way this one is, when they put their head down, it kind of sinks down a little bit. They can kill themselves with the wrong kind of breast collar. you got to be careful. Um, how long you been farming? That's the second time you've been asked that? That might have been the one I saw earlier. Uh. How you learn to ride a horse? Get on and take off. <laughs> Give it a kick, Jill. Just send it. <laughs> Just send it. I'm going to... I want to know so. when you're going to exactly. let me be the intern of the beaches of Winnebago. Whenever you convince me that I need you, that I can't live without you. When you get here, don't chop down, <laughs> chop down <laughs> trees. <laughs> What's it like to be Dale Brisby for a day? Go check that Instagram. I mean, TikTok. TikTok. What's your saddle brand? Um, Billy Cook. Billy Cook. Just got a new Billy Cook saddle. I'm pretty pumped about it. Shank bit or snaffle for ranch horses? Depends on what ranch horse, old son. The younger they are and less they know, probably a snaffle. Depends on the stick. And then moving them on. Is Kate going to be on it? Yes, she is. Is Kate Here I am. dating anyone <laughs> present? No, I am not. Ooh. Secret admirer. Do any ranch hands make salary in Texas? Yeesh. That's a broad question. Yes, they do. They usually don't make a bunch. So they do, but not a lot. Like if you like work on a ranch and you live there and you're provided everything. Where can I buy them sweet pearl snaps you were always wearing? Panhandle Western Wear. PanhandleWW.com. Thoughts? How many women? How many women has Dale Brisby dated? <laughs> Too All many. Of <laughs> All of them. <laughs> A bunch. <laughs> I was talking to somebody about that today. <laughs> My pastor was like, you got to slow down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when are you going to get, when are you going to invite me to brand with you? People ask me that. It's like, if you don't see Leroy with me, I'm not going to invite anyone else. He's number one on the list. So if you, if I'm by myself, <laughs> then that means I couldn't invite anyone. When are you going to get more Super Puncher buckles? Oh, we need to reorder those. Noted. Why don't you ever ride? Why don't you ever add more money? <laughs> what do you think it takes to be a cowboy? Ooh, Donnie. What do you think it takes to be a cowboy? Well, I guess it depends on who you ask and like what kind of cowboy He's you're talking you. about. I'm asking <laughs> Donnie Ray Daytona. <laughs> well, if you're talking about rodeo cowboy, you know, just takes getting on stock or going down the road doing timed events or whatever you want to do. If we're talking like a moral code, I don't like. <laughs> I don't think you just be honest and. As cliche as that sounds, and try to live the life the best you can, and do the right thing. Yeah, it really depends on how you're asking the question. Yeah, because like I don't re- like if you're talking like the way he asked it. What do you think it takes to be a cowboy? As simple as this 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 question is, I don't know. I find it really tricky because like you never you don't want to be the first person to call yourself a cowboy you know what i mean like yeah. it's like it's a title that like you want bestowed upon you from someone you respect you don't really care <laughs> that like people that don't know what they're doing call you that because that don't really mean nothing so there's all kinds of like i think i think there's all kinds of ways that this question can be asked you know or and and answered and so, meaning like like you said, morally, or maybe like, do you make your living doing that, or could you make your living doing that? Maybe you make your living doing something else, but you have the ability to make your living doing that. And so you, so like, there's all kinds of like categories. Like, do you mean someone who just like wears a cowboy hat and they're aspiring to be that? So the easiest way to answer it is like, what person? leaves no doubt that they're a cowboy. Yeah. And 
So it doesn't matter who's asking, what does it take to be a cowboy? This answer would cover, you know, this Mm -hmm. person would answer that question. And in that scenario, like the most extreme form, I think it would be if you, if you make your living riding a horse, like if you make your, if you, if you show up to work, you, 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 and if you, if you go to work, the kind of work that you can't show up without a horse. Yeah. Then you're a cowboy. Like if you show up a foot and they say that's okay, then you're probably not. Then, but by I the most know. extreme standards, you know. by the most extreme yeah. standards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, for instance, Cody Johnson, he doesn't make his living horseback. Yeah. But I consider Cody Johnson a cowboy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> he makes his living with a guitar. He used to ride bulls. He's cowboyed some like day work kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But now he's anyhow. So that's a tricky question. I think you got to be a little more. For instance, like you, you nailed it. Like you can sometimes just add a word. What does it take to be a rodeo cowboy? Well, like you got to compete at a rodeo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and at least aspiring to make it your full time income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, which would be like. <clears throat> I think a lot of people have this uh, false illusion that like all cowboys are like these well rounded like have their hand in every part of this the um spectrum like, I guess. like everybody freaking rodeos like everybody oh, yeah. like everybody you know that that's just not the way it is the know. same person asked what do you think it takes to be a rancher i would say oh, a, at least a portion <laughs> of your income comes from livestock cows, cows. It has to come from cows. You can't be a goat rancher or, or a chicken yeah. rancher. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> That's, a farm. I, I, That's a farmer. That's a farmer. There's chicken farmers and then so there's are ranchers. They goat yeah. farmer then. Sheep. They yeah, I feel like sheep ranchers. I feel like, I feel like, that would probably be a ranch. Yeah, I was gonna say. I don't what, think chickens what? are a ranch. Or like chickens chicken. are a farm. Or if yeah, you raise dudes. Dudes. Yeah, like a dude ranch. <laughs> no, that has a, the word ranch in it. <laughs> no, so so sorry, what like, they're no. probably doing, I got respect for that. I got I respect for that because a dude ranch, what they're probably doing is they're making money on the cows. Yeah. And then they realize like, and they got some oh, yeah. come in to like, cows, do some work for them. To, cows and they pay don't them equal do wealth. <laughs> you know, we said in the video, things they cowboys literally equal don't wealth. say. <laughs> we said in the video, cow, things cowboys don't say, cows equal wealth. The dude ranch... They get that, yeah. So what they do? There's, there's, they they charge people to come fun. in. I was no, just I know. Making I, a joke. I hadn't really thought about it, but I imagine like those guys. They got and because that's what you got to do. You got to find multiple streams of income. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because it's a still probably like a working ranch in Wyoming. You know, like, but they want to go out there and vacation and learn how to do that. For instance, the Quattro Six Sace Ranch is going to probably be ROI positive. For more reasons than just cows, yeah. they're gonna probably do some filming out there, mm-hmm. you know. So that that's a another stream of income. Same thing with like a dude ranch. We're gonna charge you to come in here. I knew a guy did that. I charged fifty bucks for x amount of people to come in and help him gather their cows. Dang, that's smart. But now Streams you're not gonna. They better be some gentle cow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna have some. Running off Yarlins. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. Yarlin. Yarlin. Why is it that some ranchers use cattle dogs and some don't? Uh, in my experience. Country. Yeah. East Texas, a lot of guys have dogs because like, the brush will be so thick that a, a human has a hard time walking through it, much less if he were horseback. So they'll use these dogs to send into the brush. And they'll get a cow out. And what they do is they'll teach <clears throat> if the if the cows are dog broke, then that means they'll bunch up. Maybe three or four dogs. Let's say it's a wad of fifty cows. They start some cows, when they hear dogs barking, they'll all bunch up. Because when they bunch up, you know, it's harder for those dogs to, to obviously bite fifty cows in a bunch. When when one cow is out away from the herd, kind of like a little satellite cow, all those dogs will attack her, be nipping at her, barking at her. She'll go to kicking at them. Eventually, she'll run into the herd of 50. Then you move this wad of cows. Um, and then, essentially, what will happen then, all the cowboys get behind them, and usually the dogs will go to the front, keep them from running off. 
and then you'll call the dogs off if they're if they're just doing all right then you'll call the dogs off if they get to going too fast you get them dogs and then they'll get out of front in front of them and wad them up you slow them down and that's how you can you know navigate them through heavy brush you'll have like senderos cut you know this is heavy east texas but out in west texas for instance like where i just came from there might be like four trees in six thousand acres <laughs> you know yeah and the cows all respect a horse and you know if you gather them right they learn you know and even some of those cows they see a horse and they'll start trotting in the direction of the pins you know because they know what's coming and they're just so um <clears throat> yeah and and in those situations in west texas that's why like i'm sure even to the untrained eye you can imagine why like there's different mannerisms with cowboys mm -hmm. like what i just described like you got to interact with your next man differently you know if there's dogs involved like some of those guys don't they may not have the same rules that you have in west texas because like there are no dogs so if you're not in the wrong spot, then you're the weak link. In this other scenario with these dogs, then you know there could be a weak link, weak link, but you know the dogs are gonna cover that gap. When you got 300 cows in a pet, sometimes dogs just aren't the answer. You know, some people think that you always got to have dogs. Some people think that you never have to have dogs. And I think the variable is the country the yeah. land yeah. i would agree yes. have you ever worked with dogs uh cow dogs yeah with no. us. Mm -mm. T uncle t uses a lot of he's got a lot of those people down there in east tech like they they got i could them. imagine just mm -hmm. seeing what that country's like yeah. like i have once or twice yeah but that's mm. it's it's interesting to watch and it's 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 crazy because like some of them guys know dogs and they're like, Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that dog's doing the same freaking thing as all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. And I I know it enough to like kinda start to recognize a good dog from a bad dog. I don't know it near enough to like train one. Yeah. No thanks. I I spent a little time around like hunting dogs and stuff growing right. up. It's pretty easy to tell with them, so I can imagine. My dad'll just be like it's in, I can tell. It's like a puppy. It's in his eyes. I can tell. Like, I'm yeah. like oh, okay. <laughs> I, I trust you. I believe you. Where'd you get your belt? Leroy Gibbons. We sell them on our website. I got so, one. We got. I think we might have a couple on there. Do we have some? I don't know. Yes. I know we had some last week. Go check it out. It's under the Leroy Gibbons tab. I'm just. I'm not going to talk or about this question, room. but I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> the office quote mm. tips on starting a ranch don't i'm just kidding go make a lot of money and then spend Didn't most of it on the ranch continue to make money so that you can spend it what's the stupidest thing any intern of yours has ever done oh um Gets last like week really on list. thursday i had an intern <laughs> chop down the crepe myrtles in front of my house i'll talk to them <laughs> uh, i'll get the security the security force on them um, is that me? No, I'm security. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has Dale Brisby ever smacked some mallard ducks? Yes. I could probably count how many, but yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying when you go to when you go to Missouri, you kill them. What is the preferred breed of cattle in Texas? I would say mostly you've got Angus cows. Where I where we are at, where we are. I'm not supposed to end a sentence in a preposition. That's my bot. My bad. Um. Some people get mad at them because they're too gentle. They like a little more Hereford that will have some trot. Yeah. Some high horns. <laughs> yeah. And then in South Texas, a lot of them run uh, Brahma, Bramer cattle, um, which is, you know, good for that climate and insects mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. I personally am not a fan, <laughs> but there's people you that are like Walter. Hot, hot and cold on the issue um, that they swear that they're the greatest breed ever. They're not. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, Brahma people. They are the craziest breed, though. Brangus? Yeah. You get some mixtures in there, and then you got... Mm -hmm. They don't do well here. I had some F1s that went through a sale barn here, and they do not do well. How do I get into saddle bronc riding? Donnie? 
sankeyrodeo.com s-a-n-k-e-y rodeo.com he does three day rodeo schools they just finished yesterday one in New Caney um, I'd say that's the better route than the one I went no offense what? It, the beaches what? of Winnebago what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> you just made me wait so long you know what I mean like Dale will tell you, oh, get on bulls yeah. first uh, for a while. No, that's not really, that wasn't really. No, that's not what I would suggest. <laughs> I just don't want people getting on their first bronc here. Yeah. I was just giving Donnie Hill. Yeah, go to a school. I mean, really, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter. It ma- it completely matters. But in Winnebago terms, it's just really dangerous. And I got to make sure you want to do it before I let you do it here. Because it's, it's freaking, it's dangerous. What's your favorite Kojo song? Dang. Wild as you is mine. I think Texas kind of way. Wild as you is pretty good. Half a song is all right. It's kind of <laughs> hey, it's, it's kind of dirty. <laughs> I, know, I don't think I know that one. Yeah, I guess kind of, but it's in a good way. Mm-hmm, right. When's the next bull riding? I don't know. What's your favorite food? Fish. Quesadillas, salad. Those Lob- quesadillas lobster. last night look good. I had Them ordered quesadillas were good last night. The most oh moment, or the best hold my beer moment. I would oh. say the O S moment was probably the, that wreck with Tyler Kipps. Yes, yes. When Dale freaks out enough to grab a bull around the neck, <laughs> that's oh, a pretty yeah. that's pretty safe to say that I was thinking O S H I T right then. Mm. <laughs> Only because I know what it feels like to be that helpless. What rodeos are you planning on going to? Um, Hubbard this weekend. Donnie's entered up. <gasps> I Who? didn't know that. Yeah, I don't tell people. I know you don't. Talk about sucker daddy. Or the wig. He told me. What you want to know about better. my wig? I'm just going to punch you in the face. <laughs> I didn't tell him he was there when I was talking about it with someone else. He was... Mm. No, I asked, him, I asked him what rodeo, and he told me. He's like, don't tell Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell her. What kind of ropes do you use? Cactus? Ever been to the Denver Stock Show? Yes. Your I'm life story. Your life story. Tell us about your childhood. I already oh, have. Yeah, covered that one. <laughs> More roping tips. Y'all are coming to the wrong person for roping <laughs> tips. I'm just going to tell you straight up. You want to talk about bull riding? Let's talk about that. Who can that. they go to? Uh, whose page? Uh, Trevor's doing a lot more YouTube with the Relentless yeah. channel. I mean, that's a pretty good start. <laughs> I mean, Trevor Brazil. Yeah, I guess. Start there. Um, has he won? Is he is he a world champion? I, I don't know. Once if, or twice. I think he's been to the NFR. I know he's been. Yeah. I don't know if he's won the world. Yeah. It's funny because I think he's we been to the NFR at least twice. Actually, now that you say that, but only in one event, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like people would actually comment, like, "Yes, he's won the championship." <laughs> <one." Okay, laughs> no, I know, I know. Dude, trust me, I know. People are like take everything so seriously. Calm down, people. It's yeah, us. <laughs> believe us. Like everything we're saying is a joke. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. No, it's a hot dog, bro. Bruh. Bruh. It's, it's a wiener, bruh. Why Joe <laughs> is off probate, probation. Joe is not off probation. Is the warehouse still open? Yes. I've already talked about it. Nine to five? What kind of Christian are you? I hope the kind that's going to heaven. <laughs> 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 are there different levels? Are there different yeah. kinds? Oh, man. I hope the kind that's going to heaven. I think they meant like what religion? Like denomination. 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 Yeah, that's a good yeah. That's a better word. I don't know. I hope the kind that's going to heaven. Yeah. Non dumb. I've got to pee bad. Is that a question? What is the time? <laughs> <laughs> who who is the timed event version of DB? Uh, Trevor Brazil. Yeah. 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 I would say Trevor. Yeah. Brazilian or American style bull rope. I've always used American. What else? MJ, MJ or, or LeBron. LeBron? MJ. That's so yeah. hard. LeBron's no, not, not dumb. Le- LeBron's not done. There ain't, last Dance isn't about LeBron. It's about MJ. 
I still have not seen that, and I need to. I was watching the other day. It was pretty good. Is it still on Netflix? Yeah. yeah. I think it's a Netflix or You need to watch oh, it. Okay. It's pretty... It's motivational. Yeah, I bet. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the Rodeo Time podcast, episode 64, maybe? Something or other. Something like that. Um, we're just out here ranching stock around the clock. Ooh. Got a shoot for American Hat tomorrow. Shoot for Rock and Roll Denim next week. And um, what else? We're going to Alabama soon. Noodling. Oh, that's fun. We went to Stasis last week. That's coming out tomorrow. How was that? That was really good. Really good time. Really. Donnie got on seven horses. I really <coughs> got to be around some guys, other guys that are doing the thing. And <laughs> Yeah. Hear what they had to say about it. So, other guys kind of starting out. No one, no one had been as on as little as horses as I had. Everybody there had been on more horses than I. Yeah, had. yeah, definitely. And uh, but it was still, it was cool. It was, it was neat. Yeah, it's it's. I like uh, I like I like to be around Dean. I think me and Dean think a lot alike. I think. Yeah. You're both redheaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah. what did it feel like to have that caliber of buck and horses under you? Something that Man. jumped higher, and kicked harder, and was faster. It, it didn't really feel that different when you were on them. Getting bucked off is a little different. Like you, you definitely get more ejected. You don't just <laughs> like. That's a good thing too. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. They bucked. These horses freaking bucked. Like. There wasn't a whole lot of second chances with these horses like you might get on. Yes. Like, I don't know. Ver- two very good observations, and that was one thing that I I knew going into that week. But, like, my old man, I always wondered why uh, he didn't put us on bulls sooner. Yeah. And when he did, we, we got on bulls, you know, and he was like, well, one thing was, like, I, you know, when you get bucked off a bucker, you get bucked off. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get, when you slide off of some other thing, then you land right under them. Yeah. It's a little different. Little did he know I was never going to get bucked off anyway, so yeah. that was a mute mm-hmm. point. But the other thing, yes, you don't get as many second chances. That's what's rough about schools. You know, you need you need to get on animals that you can have second and third chances with. Yeah, if you quit lifting for just a split second on these, you're not. like. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Yeah. You can't stop lifting. And I, th- I was watching some of those videos back, and I was like, that's where I quit lifting. Like, yeah. And yeah, but it happens so fast that you, yeah, you, you don't even realize that you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. When are you getting on another one? Tomorrow. I'm gonna catch frostbite. Maybe the next day. The next. I day. gotta go. To whenever, the whenever, whenever is the best day for you. <laughs> I'm ready. American Hat shoot tomorrow. We'll look at. We'll look out for it Wednesday. When are you getting on another one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, we need to get some steers up in here and have a steer riding. Yeah, I we do definitely that. do. We definitely need could to. Could I handle frostbite or no? I think you'd be all right. Yeah, you could. I don't know. I don't know why you'd want to. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to just to do it just for the heck of it. You think he's that much bigger than like? He's just faster. Yeah, he's just faster is all. Well, you get a steer in here, and I'll kick back out at it. Yeah. We need a slow steer. Yeah. That's a good way. I think we need, like, we need like six of them so we can have, like, a legit, like, buck yeah. out. Yeah, there you go. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. We got those lights. Yep. That'd be down. We're about to start using them. Start, about to start getting, getting hot. Down for the get down. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rodeo Time. Check us out, dalebrisby.com. We've got all the goods. Uh, text me, 940-353-0890, um, and uh, let's visit. You'll also receive like some some good. Text me podcast. Text me the word podcast, and uh, you'll receive updates on when these come out, and um, you'll also receive you know promotions, free shipping stuff, stuff like that. You'll get updated when videos come out, etc. So 940-353-0890. Thank you, Rock and Roll Denim. We're on to the next one. Pal, pal. No life advice.
Oh, yeah, life advice. What you got? <laughs> Sometimes you got to ask yourself, is this juice worth the squeeze? Did I put that on my Snapchat? Did you hear that? No. Oh, <laughs> that's what Bruce said. I don't know. I didn't hear, see it on your Snapchat. We talked oh, about it last week. At nice. The, at the Mine is a man has two lives, and uh, he his second one starts when he realizes he only has one. Drink some water. Drink plenty of water from the trainer. What you got, Willie? If you're not first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Ah, lame. <laughs> 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 and that's where we end it. Don't cut trees down. <laughs>